Hey guys, build report for the Hot Chilican Fuzz. It is a guitar PCB project. This is the first guitar, guitar PCB project that I've actually done a build report and sound demo for. Um, where do I start with this one? It was quite some time ago this one was sent in to me from someone from the Mad Bean forum and I apologise, I can't remember who it was. It was that long ago, we're talking maybe four plus years ago. Just never got on, n never got to it. Put on a too hard basket, I'll get into that a bit in a moment. Um, why I put it on, why I unnecessarily put it on the too hard basket. Um, this is what the pedal looks like. Uh, maybe we'll take a close up on the bench. First thing you're going to notice, of course, is the artwork. Um, my son drew on the front of it for me and I epoxied over the top. I thought this would be a good kind of time capsule um, for, for, for him at this point in his life. He's obviously young and um, I wanted something immortalized on the front of this this pedal forever because it was a pedal that I very much planned to keep it's a very it's a it's an it's an awesome sounding fuzz um, so I knew I was going to keep it so I wanted him to put something on there uh, it's not one that I was going to sell so um, that's what I that's why I, I we, we went with um, with his his drawings on the front and he had a ball he loved it and um, and I've actually got a video on him actually um, painting the front of it because just wanted to share the idea with other with other pedal builders, particularly the hobbyists. Um, well, mainly the hobbyists. Uh, you can you can have children involved with your with your hobby. I know there's it's technical and there's you got to concentrate and you can't make mistakes and there's hot soldering irons and sharp tools and things like that. But there are ways to involve your children in pedal building, and I think this is probably got to be one of the best best ways I've thought up so far um, particularly I'm talking about young children here not sort of 10 plus you know I mean you could probably trust them with um, sharp tools and a soldering iron about that that age around that age um, but any any child can draw so there you go so that's immortalized on there forever and if one day he decides to play guitar or something I can um, um, I can he can have the pedal and he can look at uh, the drawings that he did when he when he was young, I think I just think I'm a, I'm a little bit sort of you, you may not know, but uh, I'm a little bit more I'm I'm a little bit of a sentimentalist, um, and I just think it's important for people to remember where they've come from in their life and that they were young and innocent one at um, one point in their life. It, it reminds you of how you are when you were a child, um, particularly if you're looking after children as well, um, and just reminds you to be patient with them. And all those sorts of things because you were there once too um, but not just that just the good memories of being a child as well um, you know and all, all the things that happened in your childhood hopefully you had a good childhood I know I, I, had, a, I had a fantastic childhood I, I hope you had a good one too maybe if you didn't you probably don't want to remember them but anyway that's a different story so that is his artwork and when you put that epoxy over the top it just makes everything pop underneath it that's why I keep coming back to it. it's an extra step it's probably an extra 20 minutes per pedal in, in my little in my little cheap way that I do it. You can see it's not on the side, it's only on the top, but it's worth it. Um, I think it looks great, particularly, again, if you're just doing it as a hobby. Actually, you know what, even as a commercial, um, uh, a, small, a small builder, well, not small builder as in stature, small volume builder, um, uh, it's it's still a good option because very durable as well. If you do it right, it's very durable. Um, so that is that is the artwork on the front. And, oh, and he chose the knobs too. He wanted the two green ones and the black one. Um, so it's all, it's, again, it's something that he can do. So I just wanted to um, personalize it to him. So I think it turned out really good. And when my daughter gets old enough, I'll, I'll, um, I'll get her to do one as well. Actually, I do have a pedal that she was involved with, but you'll have to wait for that one. That one will be another another build report slash sound demo. So the Hot Chilicon Fuzz is a silicon fuzz, four transistor silicon fuzz that uses 2N5089s. Barry from Guitar PCV mentions that the HFEs almost don't make any difference whatsoever and I'd believe him. Um, so, But I just went with the 2N5089 which is, mind you, actually uh, currently 
Uh, end of life, which means we can't buy them anymore. Once again, the hobbyists get, well, I won't say that word, they get done over by the electronic um, manufacturers. There's not enough demand for a particular component and they say, oh, well, that's kind of tapering off, so let's just, let's just kill it. Luckily, I've got about 3,000 of them, so if you need them, they're on my web store, um, so that should keep us going for a while, and there's other retailers that have stocked up on them as well, so um, at least they're still available, as opposed to not available, and everyone killing each other for them, like the FETs, the, the, the FET crisis of, what year was that? <laughs> the FET crisis of 2015? I think it was, uh, maybe, maybe 14, whenever it was. Uh, anyway, um, so, yes. So this is it, um, they, they're not pot mounted. Uh, this is a pretty, I think it's a pretty old layout from quite some time ago. This would have been way before anyone was um, doing uh, pot mounting with, with this sort of stuff. And you don't need to use Barry's off-board wiring. I mentioned at the start, um, I didn't want to tackle it because um, I was a little confused about the actual, the actual layout. And it was because of the off-board wiring, I wasn't sure how I was going to actually test the effect before I boxed it up. As you'd know, that's absolutely essential step that you have to do before every single build that you're ever going to do. You have to test it before you box it up, if you can. Um, if, it's, if it's a buffered output, you can't. But if you can, then you should. Uh, and that is 99.9% .9 of pedals, so test it before you box it up. Uh, and I didn't know how I was going to do that. And then I just sort of sat down and looked at the off-board wiring, and you can see, you can see in the build doc um, how to do that, the off-board wiring. And I just sort of thought, well, I don't, I can just bypass all that stuff and just tap straight into in out um, plus ground, just like you normally do. So it was actually really nice and simple. So you can see those aren't the switch, uh, the switch pads for his uh, offboard wiring it haven't been populated. I've only gone um, in, out, and you can see which one, which one in it. Let me get a bit closer for you there. You can see which one is actually connected to the input because it's one that's got track on it. One that doesn't have the track on it, it's collected, connected to the ground plane. So obviously that's going to be for shielding. Um, but you don't need to... You, you could tap onto that and go to the input and the output like that, um, straight to the lugs uh, on the input and the output off that. But I've just gone off the ground and... I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, I've just star grounded down here. So everything's connected to that. Um, the input jack shield... And of course, the input jack shield is connected to the enclosure, so this one is connected, and that's why on all off-board wiring, no, not all, on, on, on a lot of off-board wiring um, schematics, that doesn't have a wire connected to it. Um, a lot of pedals you'll see that I've built doesn't have a wire connected to the ground on the output. You don't need to, because it's connected to the chassis. But don't just believe me. Test it, of course. So if we put it uh, a... Um, multimedia in continuity mode and we put one lead on the shield there and then we touch I'm trying to get this in view so you can see it as well and we touch the um, threaded part with the, where, the, where the shields connected to on the jack you can see that those two are connected and you can also see that if well so if that's connected then it must be connected to the enclosure and if it's connected to the enclosure this one's also connected to the enclosure which you can't see, so I'll move it into view. Uh, this jack down here, the shield's also connected to the enclosure. And if the shield on this one's connected to the enclosure, then it's connected to all the other grounds. Ground, 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 ground. See that? They're all connected together, so you don't need to use those two. You can if you want to go straight there. Might make it a little bit neater, but you can just go off that one ground down and then they all connect together, so it's kind of like a oh, how would you how would you how would you put it like a kind of like a pool, I suppose. You know, it's just everything's just sort of um, everything's at the same at the same at the same resistance level. So, hope that made sense. So, it's a little oh, excuse me, I just had lunch. A little messy, um, but that that is generally due to the um, when you wire up. Um, and I also hot glue because they they often snap. They, they snap all the time. So I just put a bit of hot glue across the top just to keep them from snapping. Because trying to replace one of those once you put it inside the enclosure is just an absolute pain in the backside. So just a bit of hot glue fixes that. Um, and then that is kind of it. Um, I socketed the transistors in case I put them in the wrong way or wanted to change them, which I didn't have to do. 
can't remember what that BIOS was for actually, let me just look at the build dock. I've absolutely no idea because it doesn't say in the build dock, but it's connected to the emitter of Q3, so I'm assuming it is some sort of gain control, perhaps, um, increase the gain of Q3. Um, so it's not a bias, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a gain control. And I, and by the look of it, I actually used 20, 20K instead of 2.5K. It must have been all I had on, on hand. And it's actually set to the middle, as you can see. So it's actually on 10K because they're linear. So I'm uh, not quite sure, but there you go. Still sounds awesome. And with a fuzz pedal, you're probably not going to really notice much difference anyway, no matter where you put that on. It must just be a game control. I'm not sure. There you go. So that is pretty much it for this one. I don't know what else to say. I've got some more, obviously got some more drawings going on on the inside there. I think um, I think my son wasn't um, wasn't fulfilled when he had <laughs> drawn on the front and wanted to keep going. Can't actually remember him doing that, but it doesn't matter. Adds to the charm of the pedal, I thought. So what a great idea to spend some time with your kids to um, to do some um, drawings on a pedal and um, I highly encourage you to do that, spend a bit of time with them and just give them artistic license to do whatever they like um, because it's their drawing and it's something that they'll see in the future um, and they, that's actually Posca pen by the way, so it's a paint pen um, in case you're wondering how I did, how we did cut a uh, colour on black um, but yeah, just give them free artistic license to do whatever the hell they want with it, really. As long as they don't paint on the side, because I can't epoxy that. Uh, yeah, whatever they want. And um, yeah, and it's a lot of fun and something that they can look back and remember on um, in the fu in the future. Um, that's all I want to say about it. Wait, um, next up will be the sound demo, of course. And it is a very good fuzz. In, as I said at the start, that's why my son's drawn on it because I, I very much plan to keep it because it was a good one. So if you did send the PCB in to me five years ago, sorry for the long delay um, and thank you very much for sending it in, it was a very kind gesture and yeah, I'll see you in the sound demo. Thanks for watching this one. Cheers.